everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all, let's make our own spiral notebooks, spiral notepads from scratch. Stay tuned. So glad that you decided to stop by because today is going to be a good one. Welcome to all of my new subscribers and to all of my new friends. Welcome back to all of my longtime subscribers and longtime friends. Y'all, today we are going to make our own spiral notebooks or spiral notepads, spiral whatever it is you want it to be. We're going to make them from scratch, including the spiral. I'll give you guys a closer look in just a minute. But y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. And so y'all, here's a closer look at today's awesome project. When finished, mine are going to measure four by six, but yours can be any size and you can put as many pages in yours as you want. The process will be very easy. So we're going to make this from start to finish. And you can see how my notepad just opens and opens and opens. I'm able to do that because I made my own spirals. Same with this one. So I have two here. I'm going to make the third with you guys. Here is what we're going to need to make it. So I have 12 pieces of four by six scrapbook paper that I have cut. But like I said, you can add as many pages to yours as you want, but I have 12 pieces of four by six and I am using a light pattern so I can write on this if I want. And then I have some wire and y'all, I can't remember the gauge on this wire, but check my Amazon storefront because I will have this wire linked, but it is from the Panda Hall Elite and it comes in so many beautiful colors. I ordered it in blue, gold, green, bronze. It really is a beautiful high quality wire that's very easy to work with on this project. And here are a few of the spirals that I have already made. Now you can make your spirals in various sizes. So these two are thinner than these. You can make your spiral loop as wide or as narrow as you need for it to be. And then you're going to need some way to at least cut your wire and bend it. I have my wire nips and I also have some needle nose pliers that have a nip on them as well. And then for my decorative elements, I'll just be pulling from a 12 by 12 sticker sheet and probably using some of these flowers. And then you're going to need some way to punch a hole. I'm going to use my Crocodile handheld. Your Crocodile Big Bite will work well for this. Or if you have just a standard hole punch that will only punch through one or two pages at a time, that'll work as well. I like the Crocodile products because I'll be able to punch through all 12 of these sheets at the same time. So I am going to bring in just a couple of clips. I want to keep everything nice and straight. So I'm going to zoom in on this just to make sure that you're able to fully see what it is I'm about to do. So y'all, I have my ruler and I have a pencil. I turned off my overhead light because it was reflecting on the ruler. I'll turn it back on in just a minute. But what we're going to do is line up the ruler with the edge of the paper and then we're going to make a mark at one eighth of an inch. And you can see how I made that mark. I made the mark so that it was pretty long. Then I'm going to move over the ruler to that mark. And then I'm going to make a mark every one quarter of an inch. So I'm just going across and marking every quarter of an inch. All right, so hopefully you can see my marks going all the way across. That's the guide that I'm going to need when I'm punching. So I'm going to be using my Crocodile set on the 1 8 inch setting. What I like about this Crocodile, there's a screw that allows you to adjust the depth. So I have unscrewed this and moved it all the way to the front as far as it will go. That's how deep I want my holes to punch. So I'll show you what I mean. My hole is going to punch in at a depth like this. Now I can slide this back by just loosening it. 
and this little slide here will move back and forth and that is what will determine my depth. So if I have it all the way to the back, you can see how far I'm able to go in, but I want mine as far forward as it can go. And I still have my camera zoomed because I want to make sure that you're able to clearly see this part of the process. So I am going to take my punch and when I punch, I am going to position it over that line that I made and punch. And you can see that my crocodile was able to go through all of my pages. And I just keep doing that going across and by setting the depth on there, that means that I'm going to be even when I go across. So when I'm punching, I'm actually making sure, I don't know if you can see that or not, I'm actually making sure that the line falls in the center of my hole and that's my guide for punching. So let's just go ahead and do all of these following the same process. And we're going to punch our last two. And so now I have all of my holes punched. I'm going to scoop this up. If you want to start a confetti mix collection, you certainly can by saving all of these. So now I can just remove my clips. I'm going to take my pencil and erase those marks. And so now I have 16 holes going across the top. I am going to bring in my wire and I'm just going to take off an amount and then I'm just going to knit. So what I have here is a piece that is about 32 inches long. Now you're going to need a long piece because we are coiling and we're going to have tighter coils. And I might not need all of it, but it's better to cut it too long and coil it and have more than you need than to cut it too short, coil, and start realizing that you have run out of coil and you don't have what you need. So to coil, you can use a variety of things. I'm actually going to use the pencil because I want my coil to be this size. But this is a little bit thicker, so it will give you a thicker coil if you wrap, or you can wrap around something this thick. The size of what you're using to wrap will determine the size of your coil. So I want my coil to be like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to twist it a little bit to get my curl started. And then I'm just going to take it and I'll start turning my pencil to coil my wire. And I know that I need at least 16 loops on this coil. And I'm just going to go ahead and scrunch that up just a little bit. We can fix it in a minute. And you just keep twirling. I'm going to stop and count to see how many I have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And I'm actually going to coil to give me 18 coils because I like to have just a little bit of extra. And now that I have my coils, I'm going to scrunch it up a little bit more because I can stretch this out once we get ready to use it. So then I'm going to use my nips and when I cut, I'm going to cut so that I already have a curl going. And now I'll just stretch this out just a little bit. We can stretch it even when we're making the book if we need to. So I'm just pulling this out a little bit. I'm going to take it and put it like that just to make sure. So now I can take my coil and we're going to start here on the end and all we're going to do is just twirl it 
to bring it through each one of our holes. And it really is as simple as what I'm doing right here. And just keep going until you get it all the way through. And there I have my coils through. And now that I have given myself some extra, I am just going to take my wire nets and I'm going to trim here. I'll take my needle nose, take this little piece here in the back and just twist it so that it is out of the way. And then we do the same thing on the other side. We just take that end piece and we twist it to get it out of the way. So now we have another spiral notebook, easy to make, super easy to use. And y'all, this is another one of those crafts that you're able to do with minimal supplies. You don't need a whole lot of anything to be able to do this. In fact, if you have a bunch of scrap, scrapbook paper, you can take those scraps. Even if the patterns aren't the same, you can bunch them together punch your holes and you can turn those into a doodle pad or a scratch pad or a notebook. The possibilities are endless because you now know how to make your own spiral coil and then coil it through your notebook. So you can make these in any size for any reason, any season, any gender. You can even run your spine down the side, totally up to you. So I think I'm just going to take a sticker And this one says, happiness blooms from within. I'm going to take that sticker. We're going to put it right there. Then I'm just going to flip over to the back side. And I'm going to take a little flower. And that will be the back of my book. And so there we have it, y'all. How simple was that? We made our own spiral notebook because we made our own spirals. Super, super easy. Don't be afraid to experiment with new things. Nothing that I'm doing is so complicated that you can't do it. All it takes is just a little bit of practice and patience and you too will be making some of the most beautiful paper crafts that you've ever seen and you'll be so proud because you made it. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed today's super awesome way to make our own custom spiral notebook, spiral notepad, spiral whatever. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.